Finally, we'll look at one last carboxylic acid derivative, and that's the nitrile. It's rather unique, and with, uh, again, no carbonyl here, no carbon oxygen bond, but a carbon nitrogen triple bond instead, uh, but still technically considered a carboxylic acid derivative. Uh, and in this case, we can make them in two ways. So we'll start with synthesis, and we could do an old reaction here and just do SN2 with cyanide. Um, so that's one way, and the other way is new, and this is a technically a dehydration reaction, and we'll dehydrate an amide, and the reagent of choice here could be one of three different ones, and SOCl2 is the most common, but you might also see P2O5 or POCl3. Uh, but I'm only including SOCl2 here, and the truth, though, is that for many classes, you won't even include this reaction altogether. So uh, sticking it in there because it does show up in quite a few, but for many classes, it'll just be absent entirely. So the first reaction with nitriles is hydride reduction, and like all the rest of the carboxylic acid derivatives, we're using lithium aluminum hydride. Uh, and in this case, the mechanism is a little bit problematic, but at least we'll take a look at the first step again. And we'll do attack on the carbon here and kick electrons over to the nitrogen. But from there, the mechanism gets a little bit funky, but you can kind of see that we're well on our way to forming an amine here. And so just reducing the triple bond to a single bond, adding two H's to both sides. So you can also react a nitrile with a Grignard reagent here, and this is going to be a little bit funky because that nitrogen is not even going to be in the final product here. So, But we'll have our Grignard attack the carbon-nitrogen triple bond, kick electrons over to the nitrogen, and we'll actually take a look at the mechanism on this one. So now we'll have a carbon-nitrogen double bond and a negative charge, and we'll now have attached our new methyl group from this particular Grignard. So from there is where we do step two, where we add the H3O plus. So and in this case, we're just simply going to protonate that nitrogen, at least initially, to get this guy right here. And with that carbon-nitrogen double bond, this is an imine. So and if you guys recall, we made imines with ketones and aldehydes. So and we learned that when you make an imine from a ketone or aldehyde, if you use H3O plus on it, it reverts it back to a ketone. And so because this is formed in H3O plus, so there's an equilibrium here and the H3O plus reverts it back to a ketone, getting rid of the amine entirely. So this is actually a new synthesis for a ketone we're learning in this chapter uh, using a Grignard with a nitrile. Uh, a little tricky at the end, but again, this is one of those six-step mechanisms. Uh, that's not from this chapter, though, so you're probably off the hook on this exam. Uh, but not going to take the time to go through mechanism because it's one we already covered in a previous chapter. So, and finally, we'll finish this off with the hydrolysis of the nitrile. And we saw this earlier when we looked at the synthesis of carboxylic acids, and it was one of our new ways of synthesizing carboxylic acids. And I really focused more on doing it under uh, acid hydrolysis here uh, with heat. And as you recall, the intermediate for this reaction was the amide. So, but under acidic or basic conditions, it's going to eventually become a carboxylic acid. Now, I focus on the acid conditions that's more, much more common. If you do this with hydroxide, you'll initially form the carboxylate instead, which is why we just simply add H3O plus to protonate it and become the carboxylic acid. So technically it can be done with acid or base, but you'll much more commonly see it done under acidic conditions.